Route will be open in five minutes, Father. Yeah. Hi, guys. Black is here. And I've been told by a few people, a few of my fans, that they love when I tell them stories. Okay? I'm getting ready to tell you a story about my dad. Okay, my father, we had a junkyard, right? And he had an old Chevrolet boom truck. I don't remember what year it was, but you had to push a lever on the floor to start the damn thing. It had an inline six. It was a three-quarter ton truck. It had eight lugs, single axle, okay? The bed, he had taken the bed off and he had built a boom. A boom is a structure where you can, that hangs out the back, almost like a tow truck. We used to use to take motors out of cars. Okay. The truck did not have a lot of weight on the back of it, even though it had the boom apparatus. It didn't have a lot of weight. My father had an old Chevrolet Impala. It's really not important what year it is, but if I had to guess, I would say 72. It was facing into some woods. It had no tires on it uh, for some reason. It had no tires on it. And my father wanted to jump this car, but he couldn't pull it out of the woods because his um, his F-250 kept spinning. So I told him we used a boom truck. He, didn't, he said the boom truck was too light. So I tried to explain to him that if he backed the boom truck up to the car, Jack the car up off the ground, then tie a chain to the car, to the frame of the boom truck. It will pull it out. My father, he didn't even want to try. He kept saying, it's too light. It's too light. And I'm like, yeah, dad, I know we're going to take the weight of the back of the car and put it on the boom truck. He said, it's too light. Wouldn't even try it. So that day we went home. I came back up to the junkyard got the boom truck and i jacked the back of the car up with the with the um crane tied a chain a short chain to the frame of the, the boom truck into the car and i tried to pull it out the first time it spent okay i backed up to the car and then i yanked it one hard time and it got the car to moving and i dragged the car up out the woods to where we disassembled the car. I let, let everything down, took the boom truck and put it back where we had it. And the next day my father come in and he see the car sitting in the middle of the driveway and he's like, he thought that he had a friend that had a tow truck. He thought the friend had come in and moved the car. So I didn't say anything to him because I know he's gonna raise hell. But anyway, the friend finally came in. My father went, asked the friend, you know, how much do I owe you for pulling that car out? And my friend, his friend was like, what are you talking about? And my father explained to him, and he's like, I didn't pull that car out. And then my father said, if you didn't pull it out, who pulled it out? I pulled it out. And my father read, you, I told you, you can't do that, you. Okay, Pop, if I couldn't do it, why the hell I get it out then? You probably tore up my truck. There's nothing wrong with your truck, Pop. So the point of this video is this. Whenever somebody tells me I can't do something and won't allow me to try, I found a way to try. Because I'm not going, I'm not just guessing at something. Now, you know, I used to love to go to tractor pulls. I used to love tractor pulls, you know, because a lot of powerful engines, right? And I noticed that a lot of the trucks don't have a whole lot of weight on the back but they bag up close to the sledge. They hook a short chain, you know, and the chain is short, you know, the, it hooks to the bottom of the sled. When the truck pulls out, that short chain pulls the back end of the truck down and then lifts the sledge up off the ground and they're able to pull it out. So I tried that with the car, but it, it oh, I forgot to tell you, I tried that first. I bagged it real close to the car hooked the chain to it, because the car was on the ground, but it, it wasn't enough weight to pull it out. So that's when I came up with the idea to hook the boom to it. But anyway, the point is I got it out without damaging the truck. 
Again, whenever somebody tells me I can't do something, I like to try it, you know? So I say that to say this. <clears throat> people ask me, people ask all the time, <clears throat> Black, a thousand people on the internet say that you can gain horsepower by changing the carburetor, the intake, and putting on long tube headers. A thousand people say that, Black. Why do you say otherwise? Simple, because I know better. A lot of people, those same thousand people watch the same videos I watch from all these channels trying to sell stuff. Whenever someone is trying to sell you something, they're going to tell you what you have is no good. You need this. You know, whatever you have is no good. You need this. Whatever's on your car that stop, <clears throat> you don't, it's bad. You need this. You know, I talked about my sister had a Toyota truck with a four cylinder and she wanted more horsepower. And I tried to find videos on YouTube telling you how to increase the horsepower on a four cylinder. There's no videos. All the videos are telling you how to increase horsepower on a V6. Now, the V6 has more than enough horsepower. So you would think to yourself, why don't they, you see like there should be more videos on how to make the four cylinders faster instead of the V6. But it's not. The, more, the majority of videos are on the V6 that's already powerful, that's already fast. So you ask yourself, <clears throat> why is that? Because people who buy the four cylinder are usually broke and don't have the money to buy performance parts. People who buy V6s are not broke. They have the money to buy performance parts so the company can make more money. At the same time, the parts they so-called selling or the parts they selling that so-called increased horsepower is bull crap. I, one of the videos I talked about, um, there was a guy selling cores. He claimed the factory Toyota cores are not powerful enough. Now think about this. You buy a Toyota, and first of all, everybody knows Toyota makes the best cars in the world. Toyota makes the best cars in the world. Why in the hell would Toyota put coils on a car, on a V6, that are no good, that are not strong enough to fire the spark plug? Why do you need to go buy high-performance spark plugs for the best car made in, Amer in, in the world? That don't make sense. But to people who have money, who want to do something, they think that will increase horsepower, will fall for it. Anyway, that's all I got to say. This is Dre. Y'all have a good day.